Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world, whatever time of day it is. This is Rachel, also known as Dixie Diamond Painter, with uh, another whip and waffle, number three, for DP Grey in May. Um, I just thought I'd show you the setup I've got, what I'm working on. So this is T with Alice and the Mad Hatter. Um, a Besties Diamond Art painting by Sherry Baldy up there, and it's from Diamond Art Dreams. She's there. So, yep, yeah, I've done the majority. So just see. So I've done up there. It's a round. So sixty by sixty. And um, I've just got Alice's hair and face, and then I'm doing the Cheshire Cat last. So it's on there. I've got my Cheshire Cat cover minder, which was one of the first ones ever bought, and it was off eBay. And then I've got, I'm setting, I've, I've kept it in baggies, I'm not doing the baggies. I'm working with. Brian Woods pen and then my purple my my try that I can't remember where it's from off Etsy and then uh Normal Diamond Art Club and then I've got these all to one bag. So a cup of tea, I'm a mug warmer. So yep. So give me two minutes. Or a blink of an eye, because it's magic on YouTube. And I'll be back in a sec. So, I'm back. Ta-da! It's magic, innit? So, uh, first I'm going to do a draw for last week's Whip and Chat. And it was, you had to find, put the word dreams in your comment. So, that was Mandy and Jane. There was only two. So, I've got a tin. I've got Mandy on one. I'll, I'll just um, show. There's Mandy's. And there's Jane's. So, they're both in there. I'm going to put the lid on. Ooh, shaker, shaker, shaker. I am closing my eyes. I can't show you. And then I'm going to just dip my hand in and take one out. And um, we'll see what the name is. And it's Mandy. So, Mandy, you've worn um, this pen. So, if you want to message me. I'm on Instagram, uh, or I'll put my um, email in, um, the, you know, the description. Do, do, do. So that's yours. I still haven't sorted Jane's cover minders out. I will have to do that. So, yeah, that's what you've won. Da -da, da -da. From the shred from the French one, uh, and then later on in the video, I'll be saying another word for you to put in the comments to get it. And today, I thought beans is um, Beans as we're um, doing uh, DP Grey in May. And uh, it's kind of an how it affects the whole family as a whole. But at the same time, it affects every family differently because people cope in different ways. And quite frankly, who what raise the wrong way when you get a diagnosis of a tumour or brain? You know, it it's not... 
no matter what it's a different outcome each time it's a different diagnosis it's a different a set of circumstances it's a different family dynamic it's a so um i just got to clean my glasses because i've got a smear mark on it but then i think it's really important you know are you a person that takes it on the chin and just gets on with things are you a person that sees the worst in everything are you you know it's different for every there's no individual that feels the same way about anything you can have the same opinion on something but you can't feel what someone else is feeling um you know if you've got kids that um are too young you've got kids that i might have to actually rub this wax a bit so I, this is the wax from a different painting i just carried on using it <laughs> from a kc design australia wax um I don't I find it really hard but there's some people that can just get on with it I mean we tend to be a bit like that just take it on the chin and well not take it on the chin we have different ways of processing and so um the kids all coped with it differently and because Max was only five. Um, he's 11 now. He was only five and a half. He was in year two at school. He was only a baby, really. So for him... It was kind of um, I don't know how to put it. We kind of he knew Daddy was poorly. He knows that he went to the hospital. He knows that he had an you could you couldn't hide the fact he had an operation. We made him aware, but Max is a mature five-year-old, may I add. So we could make him aware of, you know, you could very much tell Max, please don't do that, that could hurt Daddy. And, you know, he he would take that on board and make sure we didn't, you know, knock his head and things like that. But not all five-year-olds are like that, because if that was more Nicholas, it doesn't matter what you said to him at five, if he wanted to bounce on your head, he was going to bounce on your head anyway. Um, but so they were all ranging in different. Nicholas found it very hard to cope with and understand. But Nicholas has special needs. So we could, we very much um, got the schools involved because they were all in different schools and colleges and whatnot. So, um, we very much got people, um, the schools involved to help with the, the kids so they knew they'd got a safe person to talk to. And kids are like, I think kids are a lot like adults. In, they don't always want to show they're upset or max definitely was one of those he's one of those he doesn't like to show when he's upset he's not what you call he doesn't find comfort in cuddling and um and same for nicholas whereas mikey needs that 
um, he needs that physical contact of comfort to feel better. He likes a cuddle and he likes, you know, he likes, um, he's more tactile, whereas, and Andrew kind of, Andrew and Mikey actually to that extent, kind of, they need to be on their own for a little bit. And it's very much a genetic thing. It's a, it, it's it's my family's kind of on my dad's side. We need to just be on our own in a room, cry, um, and process, and. Some of us then can talk about it, but then other, uh, others of us just need to... No, no, I don't need to talk about it constantly. I don't... I know what's going on and I will deal with um, what's happening as it happens. And then some of the other kids are... Some of the kids are, are very... Um, Need to know what's happening, need to know every detail and and that's the same for adults. I'm very much a need to know what's going on. I need to have all the facts in my head. I need to have a kind of... I need to do the, the on the own in the room and cry. Because there was, and there was a lot of that. Even when the kids were growing up, there was a lot of crying in the bath. Or because I don't like, I don't know. I just don't like showing emotion. It makes me uncomfortable. Which, you know, sometimes you just need a really good ugly cry on your own. Well, I do. Others don't. They need that comfort, like Mikey. Mikey needs that physical contact. And needs to feel that there's someone with him. Um, my mum's a bit like that as well. Whereas, oh, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I need to process and deal with it myself. And then I can deal with it with other people. If that makes any sense. <laughs> it doesn't. As for Mr P... I can't imagine what went through his head. Well, I do, but pure fear. Again, Max, he, the kids were only young. Well, Max was the youngest at five and they were all young teens or middle teens. So it was kind of, I mean, Mikey was what, Matt, so five years ago. Andrew would have been, he's 24 now, 19, he was, at uni, he was, he was at going to uni, then we had Nicholas at 14, going on 15, and then Mikey was 11. Yeah, Mikey was 11 and Max was 5. So, you know, we had all the ranges of emotions. and But again, we got people that from the schools to really help with that. Because sometimes, you know, like everyone else, you don't want to upset other people, you know. And I always get upset when I'm one of them mums that if my kids get upset, I get upset, if that makes sense. And that's what not what they needed. They needed to have that person also that didn't get upset and could, you know, speak about things. And because it's not I don't get upset about what they're talking about. I'm not. 
getting upset about what their worries are. I'm getting a, upset with the fact that they're upset. <laughs> that makes no sense, does he? Makes no sense. Rachel, it makes no sense whatsoever. So, yeah. And, you know, we had the diagnosis of, you know, he's got years and we didn't have the diagnosis of he's got weeks or months or, you know, it, it's different. It's difficult for everyone and they process. And then, you know, I can seem very kind of, I think I can sometimes come across as quite cold. Um, hang on, I'm going to put it. It, it, it's kind of like I'm not right. This is what we've got to do. This is this. This is this. This is this, and I kind of get into that. Right. What can we do? Because it's out of our control in every other way. So, what things can we do to make things easier on us? What things are? Out, I don't tend to worry about things that are out of my control and worry about the things that I can. Control sounds the wrong word to me, but so um, whereas other people want to put their head in the sand, and that's fine. I understand really wanting to do that, but the people, you know, it, again, it's really difficult. Mr. P had his moments of why me and, you know, what have I done to deserve this and the fear of what, especially before diagnosis, we knew we'd got a tumour but we didn't know what type it was, we didn't know, how, you know, if, was it benign, was it malignant, was, what grade was it, we didn't know any of that for a long time, so he had the scan his first seizure in the July and we didn't find out he didn't have his surgery till the 1st of November and then he had um, 1st of November and then we didn't get the results till um, January And um, and then we had the treatment and the so pretty got through. Mister Mister P is one of them people that naturally worries about things, always sees the worst scenario. Um. And that's where we kind of help each other, if that makes sense. So I kind of ground him. And he kind of... Keeps me rolling, if that makes sense. Not saying that I'm always positive, because... I can honestly say at the minute that that's not the case. Just because of the depression. So Mr. P suffered really badly with because he's a generally anxious person in the first place. And then he has um he starts seizure meds. And the seizure meds that he's on are um, can cause anxiety. And he'd gone non-medicated for his anxiety until last year. Last year he went on um, because it got to the point even me sitting in a room was causing him severe um, anxiety.
anxiety, the sweats of feeling sick, throwing up, heaving, or yeah. And that's when I said, you, you know, if it, it's got to the point that I can't even sit in a room with you, and I'm normally the person that can bring him back if that makes sense when he gets into them states but he was you know he was really struggling but the the, the medication has worked to an extent but he's like I said he's a naturally anxious person so we kind of he, he, I kind of calm him down, and he kind of pushes me because I'm, I'm, um, what you call? It takes a lot to phase me, if that makes sense. Or oh, oh, no, actually, that's wrong. Some things really phase me quite quickly. <laughs> we all have them triggers. Um, but um, I've got a very high tolerance to stupidity no <laughs> no i'm not saying that i've i kind of it takes a lot to offend let's put it that way and it takes a lot to kind of um for me to react to things if it's negative things so it's like if there's a dilemma, just throw me in and I'm all right. I know what I'm doing. Chaos, cry in the bath, cry on the toilet occasionally, you know, that kind of thing. Organise, all the rest of it. People can say horrible things about me, don't really care. People, um, you know, I'm not one to... I'm not one to be worried what other people think, if that makes sense. Unless they upset the kids, <laughs> and then it's a different. I'm a mama bear. I can tell, I I can be horrible to them, but no one else can. No one else can. And the same with Mr. P. I can moan about him till the sun comes. But no one else can. Uh, yeah. But if you are struggling with mental health in general, because it is mental health in May, isn't it? It's. But I know there's a couple of events that are going on for mental health in May. I think um, don't do it on your own that's the only thing I used to kind of can you hear Nicholas ranting on the Xbox I'm sorry if you can hear it He's obviously not playing football because when you hear him play football on his um, Xbox, all you can hear is sorry, sorry. <laughs> you might hear him make a Mickey Mouse voice because he's obsessed because he can do it, make a Mickey Mouse voice. Yeah, so there are there are loads tend to I, I think for america it's very different it's very different um mcmillan over here can are in contact straight away they help with grants they help with benefits and they help with um how can i put it anything you kind of need so if you need help with transport, they'll sort that. If you know, if you ha need help, so Mr. P got help with um, clothing because um, of the weight loss. Um, transport because we had to get um, the train every day for six weeks, which is not a cheap, 
help with fuel bills. Um, but we, where we, where what hospital he's under? Um, on the cancer unit, or like where the outpatients is. They actually have Macmillan people going around asking people if they need any help with anything, if they they've got any questions. Um, the, the, I do the um, counselling can be offered. I mean, we didn't go the counselling route. But we know people that have done the counselling route and write things down. That's another thing. That's something I wish I'd done. Wrote things down. Um, don't look too much on the internet. And please don't watch um, 24 Hours in INA. <laughs> Mr P got obsessed with watching um, because his brain, they were, they were doing a, like, a, at the hospital we was at actually, a program on BBC One following surgeons and stuff. And it, Mr P's surgeon was actually, actually did um, the same surgery that he did on Mr P. And um, he went down a rabbit hole of watching everything and anything. Whereas I, I kind of, I don't need to be reminded of the, excuse my language, shit storm. And um, maybe it's, I don't know, putting blinkers on it, I don't know. I can only deal with things as they happen and. Where others people need to try and predict the future and do what they can before that, if that makes sense. I'm more of a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. We um but like I said, we all do it differently. Some people may show no emotion. Some people may not feel anything because they have that mechanism where they just switch off. Some people become raving, you know, sobbing and and that's all right too. You're allowed. I think the problem is now we're not allowed to really relax. It's kind of you're not supposed to get upset, be upset, and. Sometimes you just need to be upset. Sometimes you just need to have a bad day. Sometimes you need to just wallow in self-pity. I mean, when it gets to all the time, then, you know. But you're allowed to have that day where you think, what the... I'm not facing it. I'm not facing it today. Again, obviously, if it becomes a constant thing... But, you know, you're allowed to feel a lot bitter. Why not? Why can't you be bitter? You're allowed to feel like there's other people that deserve it more. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Why is it always the good ones? That's a very good um, thing that runs through your head. There's people out there that have abused themselves and others for and yeah we're not going down that route but but you're allowed to you're allowed to have that when you see that someone's running around and living life to the max well not to the max but um you know you know what I mean you're allowed to. You're allowed to be. Because otherwise you're just not being. Do you get what I mean? You become almost like a road. You can't just feel positive emotions all of the time. 
you don't have to be in a happy state all of the time. You're allowed to feel stress. You're allowed to tell people to off and then come back another day when you feel more up to it. You're allowed to. I mean, obviously, if you're doing that every day, then you need to go to the doctor's. <laughs> But you're also allowed to have laugh. Me and Mr P and the kids constantly laugh and we constantly joke around and we constantly take the pee out of each other and we constantly... What other people will gasp at, we find quite funny, you know. It's... You're in... You can't forget... When you're going through hard times, you need to have them little bits of that bring a smile. Because otherwise it overshadows everything, if that makes sense. So we're very much a one of a, let's prank each other, um, you know, that kind of thing. And I think that's the most important. No, even while we was on the chemo wards and he was waiting for you having his chemo, we'd be silly, you know, and we'd have a a good old um giggle. But that's what works for us. But I think as well, we've got the added benefit over in the UK um, of we don't have massive, huge medical bills afterwards. I don't know how I would cope if that wasn't the case. Because Mr P was out of work for two years. You know. So. I don't know what we would have done if things were, if we was in a different country. To be honest. And we had the extra, you know, concerns and. What not? What's Nicholas going to the low? Or maybe we can what I'm saying, one and a two. Mikey's got no exams today. So. I don't know. I will admit, when you, I don't know how I would have coped either if I had already been suffering with depression either. Because that that's a whole other ball game. Serious counselling, I would have thought, and... Um, talking about it I, def I definitely think counselling helps to a certain extent but I always have the opinion of I get overwhelmed by things that I've got no control over like um, like Mr P having a tumour like um you know things that are completely out of your control and but you live with it every day there's a difference when things are out of your control but you don't have to deal with it every day but when you have to deal with it every day that makes it 
different, if that makes sense. So, so it's good to talk through that. But it also doesn't change anything, you know. And that's what I find difficult. As much as I talk about things and get things off my chest, it doesn't change them circumstances. It's not something I can get out of. It's not something I can change. It's not something, you know. But all is calm at the moment. We're going on holiday Saturday. I still haven't done a stash video. So depending on when I finish this, so it's Mon it's Tuesday today. So I'm hoping to finish this by Wednesday. Um, I might try and do my stash video on Thursday or even Wednesday. Depends when I get it done. And then... Um, I don't know. Try and get it on. So I'm not going to be able to do the last video for DP Grey and May till actually in June. Um. So again, I might do a video, put a video up of where we're staying next week. What can the prize be for this week? Um, the prize for this week is... I'll do two prizes, a pen each. So the blue ones, these are from uh, Crafty, uh, yeah, Crafties, and um, some and some little bits and bobs, if that makes sense. So a cover minder and a, um, I might sort of put some washi tape in, and um, you know, just a little. And the word shall be the word shall be hmm what shall the word be happy place so where's your happy place my happy place is diamond painting. <laughs> or reading when I, I can concentrate. But I'm still struggling with the reading thing at the minute. But um, yeah, things I do. Diamond painting really does. With an audio book on. And my brain totally disengages from everything. And I, I'm kind of reading still with an audio book. So, yeah, diamond painting is definitely my happy place. Um, where's your happy place? Where's the place that you kind of, you know, when you you either start it or you go somewhere, and you feel your shoulders kind of, whew, you kind of get that. Yeah, I could do this, you know, in, you get enjoyment. So, my dad's happy, happy place would be bike riding. Someone's happy place might be 
um, having a massage because that's really nice as well. I do like a massage. Um, someone else's happy place might be just walking the dog. They might find that really relaxing. Um, my mum's happy place would be um, her crafting cabin. Um, the kids' happy places. Where would more? Nic Nicholas's happy place is his Xbox with the bag of crisps. <laughs> Mikey's happy place is um I don't know, Mikey's got quite a few actually. So he likes playing football on his Xbox, but he loves playing football outside. He likes walking the dog, he likes running, he likes he's got lots of different things. He like and people. I think people can be your happy place as well. Mr. Mr. P can be my happy place. My kids are always my happy place. Um, well, no, actually, that's a fib. That's a fib. Um, my kids can stress me out, no end. <laughs> but they can also be my happy place. Just sometimes sitting in the garden with a cup of tea when your garden's nice and not looking like a, a tip like mine is. But, um, you know, anything cross-stitching is your happy place or painting. Some people like to paint, some people, or just meditating. That place that just... No. It just helps you that bit to switch off from reality because you really need that. You need that escape from reality. No matter how good your life is, whether it's, you know, full of woe and worry, and just remember to. Try and make happy moments. That's my plan anyway. Just make giggly ones. I'll definitely be doing one that this week. Next week when we're in Bonnie, Scotland. With my mum and my dad. The kids. Well, Nicholas is, stays at home because he can't travel. But um, he's also 19th. So there is that. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So yeah. And if you haven't done what makes you happy for a while. So if you so, so there's some things that make you happy, like diamond painting. And I couldn't do it, couldn't concentrate, couldn't sit down long enough, couldn't before I started my tablets. So even just watching something on telly, even though I don't normally watch telly. So I watched um, Wednesday on Netflix. That was brilliant. And I've, I can honestly say it's the first time I enjoyed watching telly in ages was when I watched um, Wednesday. And I watched it all day. And I can't remember the last time I did that either. And I haven't done it since, but... You get my drift. So if you, for some reason, you can't do or go to your happy place. What do you think you can do? Even if it's window shopping. I don't like window shopping because I can't buy. <laughs> I've never liked window shopping. I don't see the point at looking at what you can't have. So <laughs> um, window shopping wouldn't be one for me. Food shopping is definitely not one for me. Clothes shopping isn't one for me. 
hairdressers. Now, I like to go to the hairdressers, but that costs money. Um, and I'd rather buy a diamond painting. So, um, but it is nice. And I could be here all day and it's not going to get anything done. So we have got the magic word to win some pens and some cover minders and whatnot is um, happy place. Where's your happy place? Sorry, having me cup today. Um, and it's still hot. <laughs> And, um, yeah. I think that's it. So if you've got any questions, if you need, um, if you want me to look anything up or um, if you want to know anything, then just comment or email or whatever you want to do and I'll carry on with this press that thumbs up boop, boop, boop. gonna love you and leave you and I hope to speak to you soon bye